Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1307. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1307 to 1311 and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we have a cross tabulated table with a bunch of row headers and column headers, and we have a set of criteria over here, and we would like to using conditional formatting, highlight only the cells that match the criteria over here. Now, we actually use this exact setup and this crazy formula for adding back in Excel Magic Trick 1305. But here, all we want to do is use conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting requires that we highlight the range that we want to conditionally format, go up to Home, Conditional Formatting. And guess what? I don't know of a built-in feature. So we're going to need to go to New Rule and create a logical true-false formula that will tell each cell in the range true, I need the formatting, or false, I don't need the formatting. Now, anytime we do a logical formula to apply conditional formatting, it's oftentimes easier to create it in the cells, see your pattern of true-false, like this true represents that cell. Down here, that true represents that cell. You build your formula in the cells and then copy and paste it and put it up into that dialog box. Now, really, since we're matching row headers and column headers against this criteria here, this is my first inclination. I would go with the OR because each row is an OR logical test. And then within each row is an AND logical test. So the first test, of course, would be to see if this row header and this column header are equal to these two. Or use the AND function for the next AND logical test. Is the row header and column header equal to these two? And then finally, the third one, row header and column header, are you equal to quad and may? And that formula is fine. Now, we could actually, instead of using AND and OR, we could take it one step further or backwards, or however you want to think of it. I'm going to hide those rows there. We could actually use straight Boolean logic, where multiplying is an AND logical test, and adding is an OR logical test. And that formula would work. We could paste it up into the dialog box. But watch this. Right click, hide. We're actually going to do a similar Boolean calculation, but I'm directly going to compare the row header to this vertical array, I'm going to say, hey, is Aspen equal to any one of these? And is the column header January equal to any of these? And we'll multiply those two array calculations. Now, in parentheses, I'm going to say, hey, the row header. And I need this locked when I copy to the side, but not when I copy down. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the column, but not the row reference. And then I'm going to ask, hey, are you equal to any of these items? F4, close parentheses. Now, if I hit the F9 key to evaluate this, you can see I get an array of falses in our case, because the Aspen is not equal to any one of these. Control Z. Now I'm going to multiply that, and then open parentheses. Now the column header. Now this needs to be locked when I copy down, but not to the side, to February, March, and so on. So I hit the F4 key one, two times to lock the row, but not the column. And then I ask the question, hey, are you equal to any of these months? F4, close parentheses. This will give me an array of trues and falses also. F9, but you could see here it found January in the first position. So notice, this is three rows. This was also three rows. So only when it finds in the corresponding position a true and a true will the multiplication give us a resultant true, which will be represented as 1. Now I'm going to actually copy this down, Control-Enter. And let's just copy it down 1. Now I have this already entered into the cell, so I'm going to hit F2. And I'm going to do something risky here. I'm going to evaluate using the F9 key a number of parts of the formula without Control Z, which in essence will hard code it. But we'll use Escape to revert back to the formula before we put it in edit mode. So watch this, F9. I can see, oh, that's right. This formula right here represents that cell. So it says, yes, I found Bellin in the first position. And then over here, you can see that blue January when I F9. 
So it found January in the first position here. So now multiplying, that's in Boolean logic the equivalent of the AND logical test. So when it sees true times true, the resultant multiplication will give us a 1, which represents true. Now I'm going to highlight all of this. And F9, you can see, sure enough, we get an array. And we can see that 1. That means it found the Bellin and the January over here in the first position. Now. We can simply add this using the sum function, copy it down and over, and whenever we see a 1, that means the row header and the column header were found over here. Now, notice I've used F9 evaluation a number of times in sequence. So if I Control Z, that's all I have. If I Control Z, notice it's just toggling back and forth. There's only one F9 and Control Z at a time when you're in edit mode. Luckily, I can hit Escape to revert back to that formula I had before I put it in edit mode. All right, now F2 up here, and I simply want to add this. So I'm going to use the sum function. Now, I could use sum product and avoid Control Shift Enter. But guess what? This formula is going up in the conditional formatting dialog box. And that conditional formatting dialog box can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. Now, to see that this works in the cells, because of course, this is an array formula. There's an operation on an array of items. There's one here. And of course, that multiplying is operating on array. So to get this to work, I use Control Shift and Enter. Immediately, I look up in the formula bars. Those curly brackets mean Excel understood that I wanted an array calculation. Now I can copy it down and over. And there's our patterns of trues and falses. If I come over here, 1 means true, of course. So F2, I can see the formula's got the column header, the row header, and the right range is over here. Now, I need to highlight this, go up to the dialog box, and paste that formula. So I'm going to go to the upper left-hand corner, F2, and copy this in edit mode, Control-C. Because it's from the upper left, I'm going to make sure and highlight from the upper left down the active cell right there. That means in the dialog box, when I paste this formula, it will, in essence, in memory, copy it in that cell and copy it down and over. So now I go to Home. And you know what? I left the conditional formatting there from before. So it would be there. The keyboard to delete your conditional formatting is Alt-O-D, Alt-D, Enter. Now I'm going to pretend like that wasn't there. Ready? Home, Styles Group, Conditional Formatting, and there it is, New Rule. Or I can use the keyboard, Alt-H-L-N. Now I need to get to Use Formula to determine which cells to format. So you could click, use the down arrow, or page down. I need to paste the formula in Format Values where this formula is True Text Box. So I could click or simply use the keyboard, Tab. Now I Control V, and there it is. That formula will highlight the cells where the row header and column header match our criteria. Now I need to add some formatting. I could add whichever formatting I want. I'm simply going to add yellow fill, click OK, click OK, and there it is. Let's see if this conditional formatting magic works. I'm going to change this to quad, and instantly that is updating. Control Z. All right, so we used that formula right there. That's pretty cool. We also could have used, if I unhide these, the AND or the straight Boolean. But I kind of like that formula right there. All right, we'll see you next trick.